And it wasn't long after we joined CHM that my wife and I found out that we were gonna have another baby. So we were so thrilled when we found out that we were gonna have another boy, our fourth boy, and the pregnancy was flawless. It was perfect and I was full term. Labor science had started and we were laboring at home when my uterus had ruptured. I, had, I heard a popping sound coming from my stomach and it was excruciatingly painful and uh, we, we saw the signs of a possible uterine rupture and I remember laying on the bed in complete peace and in, in just there was chaos. I felt like the Lord covering my eyes and covering my ears and just holding me and I remember thinking if my uterus ruptured then I could be dying. We rushed to the hospital and I had an emergency C-section and miraculously, the doctor that took Raiden said that when he cut me open, Raiden's head had completely blocked the tear. He said that I burst from end to end. I was completely open inside. And he said that Raiden's head had positioned itself in such a way that I did not bleed. And that's why I did not die. So it really was a miracle. It was a miracle. And while we were in the NICU, uh, there was th the diagnosis after we received an MRI and we were sitting in a conference room, I remember, with this massive screen and they showed us pictures of Raiden's brain. And they said, the black is brain damage and the whole thing was black. And the diagnosis that they gave us was that he would have little to no muscle control. He would have extremely severe cerebral palsy and would never, likely never be able to recognize people. And that was the hardest thing for me because how does a baby not recognize mom? And so with that diagnosis, I mean, we, would, we didn't even get like, he'll, he has a 2% chance of survival. They told us he was either going to die in the hospital or he was going to be a vegetable and die shortly after coming home if that was gonna be able to happen. So we believed after that, that we were gonna have one of two victories. We believed the promises of God, that there is life and life abundant and that he was going to be with us, that he did not leave us or forsake us and we were going to be okay because all things work together for good for those who love God. We loved God. And so we believed we were gonna have one of two victories. The first being that Raiden would have to be healed. That he, we, we didn't believe we were gonna limp out of the hospital with a next to dead baby. We believed that if we were gonna have a baby that was gonna be alive, that he would be able to grow in his love and knowledge of the Lord. And so on the other hand, we believed that there would be victory in heaven for him, where he would be free. And so we believed that both of those were victories. Right. And so, but our diagnosis was that there was no hope. 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 One of our first encounters with CHM was when we got raced to the hospital and they took Heather to the operating room and they shoved me in another room where I was just sitting there praying to God. I didn't know what my future was gonna be. Um, I didn't know if I was gonna have a wife when I came out. I didn't know if I was gonna have a son when I came out. And um, obviously, you know, the financial burden just comes upon you. And I got a text from our HR representative just saying, don't worry about the money, Neil. I've already talked to CHM and they said everything will be taken care of. And that was such a burden off of my shoulders so I could really focus on my wife and my son. And it was so, scary to be there at the hospital with you knowing that we might not have a Heather or the baby mm -hmm. and not only as a father or as a pastor it weighed heavy on me and I was so happy that I could be there and stand there with you and it was one of the hardest things I think we've ever been through and I think it was so encouraging the outpouring of love mm -hmm. that we got from the congregation yes. and the, the just the wave of prayer that held us up and even while I was home with the kids, um, trying to figure out what was going to happen, um, people were coming and bringing food to us. And gifts and for the kids. Gifts for the kids. And then the time came when the kids were going to, they wanted to meet their brother. And so the time came where got them ready to take them to the hospital and they were going to say hello and goodbye at the same time. I just remember Gavin, the oldest, holding this little baby, saying to him, um, I'm your brother 
and he said, I will never be able to teach you to play baseball because you're going to go to heaven. And the nurses are sitting there watching this. But your little cousin's in heaven and he'll teach you to play baseball. And the nurses are just crying. The presence of God was with us. Yes. Mm -hmm. And after several weeks in the NICU, we brought him home on hospice care. We, we just kind of decided we needed to be with our other three kids. They were all so small. And if Ryden was going to die, we wanted him to die in our arms and not in a cold hospital room. So we brought this baby home to die and he started to live. His eyes came together and he started to blink and he started to move his muscles. And around this time, I was up in the middle of the night taking care of him and I was crying out to the Lord one night on my knees, just saying, God, what would Ryden have been like without brain damage? What would his personality have been like and I felt the Lord speak to me strong, not necessarily like in a disciplined sense, but just firm and strong. And he said, don't you, the clay, tell me, the potter, why do you make these vessels this way? He said, don't you look at all these other vessels and say, why isn't mine like that? He said, because I made this vessel with a different purpose. That's why he is different. He has a different purpose. That's why he's this way. And I went to Neil and I shared that with him and we just rejoiced. I mean, we just felt like there never was any other ride in Joshua Hoffman. This has always been our son. son. This has always been his story and this is how God wanted it to happen. And the whole world is watching this little boy grow up and, and be healed. I believe Raiden is healed. And I'll forever pray, we'll forever pray every day until the day we die for more healing. But we believe that we have the son that God designed and created in his image for us to care for. Going through all of this, it was so comforting knowing that CHM had us, uh, they were taking care of us. They were sharing our costs and our bills and I really couldn't imagine going through this without having them on our side and they're not like other healthcare programs uh, that are cold and corporate. These were people who loved us and were compassionate and cared for us and we would get things in the mail talking to us and telling us that they're praying for us and we had friends there after these years of, of talking with them and CHM has really come behind us and helped us a lot. We've received hundreds, I think, of cards from CHM members all over the country uh, saying that they're praying for Raiden. So when Raiden's story or a prayer request had been featured in CHM's newsletter, we've received encouraging cards and letters from people that we have kept, and I'm gonna read them to Raiden. <laughs> and it was just so, it, it just was lighter having CHM be a part of this with us. And at the time of Ryan's birth, CHM and Brothers Keeper members shared almost $48,000 after $14,000 in discounts. And since then, they've shared almost $224,000 after more than $268,000 in discounts. And we just can't express how grateful we are. It's an honor to be a part of this group of people practically and truly sharing the love of Christ with brothers and sisters that they've never even met. And we are all grateful as parents and grandparents and as a pastor for how you guys have loved us. Today he's a thriving little boy who loves books. He sits up, he crawls, he starts walking. Um, he's living proof that God does indeed still perform miracles. We say he's one of the best things that ever happened to us. Our other children believe in the power of prayer more because they've watched their prayers answered over and over again in their brother and they're slower and they're more patient and they're more compassionate and they're more gentle. He, Raiden really has brought out the best in all of us. I am more like Jesus because of my son.